existentialism is not a comprehensive philosophy or way of life, but an endeavor to grasp reality. Existentialism is immersed in and arises directly out of Western man's anxiety, estrangement, and conflicts. For the whole of my adult life, not unlike many modern young people, I have been attracted to existentialism. However, if someone were to ask me to describe what this philosophy was about, I would have a tough time conjuring up a precise and comprehensive answer. I could obviously name the authors and philosophers that are classified as existentialists, perhaps even go in a roundabout way of describing the general themes of their work. Yet, rationally verbalizing the main characteristics was a challenge. Of course, to some extent, this effect was natural, as existentialism is not a thorough scientific theory. Rather, it is intentionally far from it, not shying away from critiquing rationality. I think as opposed to rational thought, existentialism operates on the intuitional, subconscious level of human existence and in my opinion, tries to bridge the gap between classical religious thinking and modern empirical thought. In Nietzsche's terms, it is an attempt to understand the meaning of life after the death of God. Furthermore, existentialism feels its way forward and tries to conceptualize and understand that which is out of reach for a human being to grasp empirically. However, this essay is my attempt at verbalizing and summarizing the essence of existentialism into three characteristics and at the end extract a rule of thumb answer to the problem of existence. After all, simplicity is the sign of expertise. The first characteristic of existentialism is actions speak louder than words. Crime and Punishment's Raskolnikov is the best example. Existentialists argue that the world is a place of action and we act out our belief rather than rationally state it, partly because the truth lies in action and it is incredibly easier to lie in speech or thought. One can imagine a person who verbally states disbelief in God or more precisely in a higher meaning or purpose and then goes on to get married and have children. Although it is not necessary to go that far, it is enough if the same hypothetical person does not steal something trivial like a coin or something tasty when an opportunity to do so presents itself. Why not? Again, existentialists suppose that we act out our belief first before rationalizing it and therefore the action of the individual is the right level of analysis. Secondly, foundationally, existentialistic thought states that suffering is intrinsic to the human experience. In other words, suffering is a presupposition to conscious existence. This idea is not unique to existentialists, but rather stems from the general foundation of Western thought, the fall of man. However, contrary to modern psychology, which from a highly abstract position sees psychopathology as an outlier, as something going wrong in a normally healthy and balanced human, existentialists take psychopathology as a given, as something built into the human experience. Existentialists believe that suffering manifests itself as a consequence of our intrinsic vulnerability and therefore there is no reason to look for extra causes of anxiety, depression, and so on. Acceptance of this fundamental suffering is the precondition towards true freedom. Thirdly, the crucial framework element or simply put the background of existentialism is the concept of throwness. I have a whole video on this concept which I will link to now via YouTube's cards. To summarize, froness refers to the seemingly arbitrary or random time and place that you were born or thrown in. As far as we are capable to grasp, there is no rational reason for you to have been born precisely now rather than earlier or later. To have been born precisely in your body or into your family and so on. As Rollo May put it greatly, one cannot take refuge in some superficial explanation of time and space. And so, what is a human supposed to do? How is one supposed to react and act with this seemingly arbitrary hand they have been dealt? 
Existentialism states that adoption of responsibility through action is the appropriate response to the suffering of existence. In essence, that is the answer to life that existentialism provides. Suffering is inescapable, yet your reaction to that suffering is where your true freedom lies. And for those still clinging on to happiness as the end goal of life, I believe Solzhenitsyn put it best when he said something along the lines of Happiness is the first thing that goes out the window when in the middle of the night you are woken up by the sound of army boots kicking down your door. Happy shouldering.